Maybe it's a good opportunity to talk about the logbooks because I mean, that is a, a very expensive part of that aircraft. Um, not only having them, but being able to produce them, being able to research them. So there's a big value on just the logbooks themselves that maybe the average person wouldn't consider or doesn't think about. And maybe I could note in there, in that logbook, depending on how the plane, how it was maintained, where it was maintained and by who, um, how, is, how does that affect to, to a brand new aircraft owner, they may not understand yeah, it's a pedigree in that a, whole process. It's a history and pedigree of that aircraft yeah. from from the beginning to present. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, great question, and uh, gives me a client, gives me a chance to uh, talk about the the what we do versus what you do. Okay. Right. So what I do when I do a logbook review, I'm looking for signs of damage history. I'm looking at uh, um, where it was maintained to make sure it wasn't maintained. At, lackluster shops, et cetera. So I'm really looking at it from a value standpoint. I'm really looking at the logbooks uh, to, to know that the airplane's okay to go forward to the facility, go forward with the purchase, but I'm looking at it from a resale standpoint. In other words, when my client goes to sell this airplane, what is the future buyer going to look at and say, I don't like that? Again, we're now, talking about optics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you guys, you're, you're having people who are trained mechanics, which I am not, go through the logbooks in an entirely different way. They're researching those logbooks, looking to make sure that all the required maintenance has been done, all the mandatory service bulletins have been accomplished, all the ADs have been complied with. So, and that's, that's something that's important for people to understand because both are extremely important. If you just take the logbooks to a maintenance facility and say, go through these, They'll do that, and they'll look at it from a maintenance standpoint, but they may not tell you, hey, the all story. the books have water damage, or they smell like smoke, they must have been in a fire, mm. or half the entries are in Spanish. You know, it's, uh, so it's two, two, two critically different things. And many times, right, the logbooks are very important. Many times the logbook research takes almost a, as long as, as, the, as, as the initial yeah. inspection itself. Absolutely. Well, you got an example of, of a plane that's five years old, or one that's 25 years old. Yeah, exactly. You know, to have a flat rate to, you know, it's gonna cost you a couple hundred or a thousand dollars to do logbook research. How old is this plane and what conditions are the books in? And, and I actually cheat the system. So I have a little side deal going with your QA department. When I go look at an airplane and do that visual inspection, mm -hmm. I'm scanning those logbooks and putting them into searchable PDFs. Right. So I can send them to my clients so they can see the logbooks. I also send them to your QA department so they can get started on the logbook research before the airplane ever gets there. Okay. So. Expedite. I the scared process. you, didn't I, when I said that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I that, knew it was going to end well, so we're fine. But that helps to abbreviate the process because right. these pre buys could take two weeks, they could take six weeks. Uh, yeah. Not even. The size of the airplane and what's wrong with it. Exactly. Absolutely. And then maybe the guy who's buying it is going to do some modifications to it as well. So, I mean, sending those logbooks to, to someone in advance to begin the research helps to abbreviate that process a little yep. bit because okay. this the inspection part of it is the easy part the the back and forth the negotiations uh, working things out between the buyer and the seller that's that's the that, critical part that is the the stretch that, that's part. where you and I earn our keep because well, if there's going to be a problem that's where it's uh, that's where the rubber meets yeah, the road yeah that, that's where your value is really put on on the center stage in a spotlight because that's the value that you can bring to, to a client yeah, at that point. Absolutely. And it is a, uh, it, it, it can be a contentious uh, situation. Um, one of the things, you know, we're just talking about going through the logbooks. One of the other things I do when I go through the logbooks is I get a sense for what this airplane is going to experience in the pre-buy. Um, I, I kind of jokingly say I'll, I'll get it within 20 grand, but I don't think I've missed one yet. When I go through the logbooks on an airplane, and it's going to you guys, you know, specifically King Air jets are, are, are a different world, but uh, in the King Air world, when I go through the logbooks on the airplane, I've done it so many times, and King Airs are so predictable from a maintenance standpoint. They really are. I know what it's going to be. So I'm able to tell my client, hey, I don't want you to freak out, but when this airplane gets to Stevens, the bill's gonna be 120 grand to the seller. And he goes, okay, there's that much wrong with it? No, it just hasn't been maintained to the standard that Stevens is gonna make it, so there's gonna be some catching up to do. I've had that conversation with prospective yeah. buyers before where they say, this is a plane I'm looking at. My first question is, who's been maintaining it? And if I hear you know, a top level shop like us or, or the other ones who really do good work, 
or a well-respected OEM and they say it just went through a you know a one through four, one through five, two months ago, at the OEM, and it's like this is going to be an easy process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, and if not, it may be different. The other important step at that point is to have that same conversation with the seller of the airplane because you don't want the airplane to get to pre-buy and the the seller panic over a hundred and twenty or hundred fifty thousand dollar bill. Uh, and you know he needs to know if he's selling the airplane. That's part of the equation. What he might be getting into. Right. And so through the pre-buy process, if there's if there's if there's appropriate communication and expectation mm -hmm. setting, things will go smoothly nine times out of ten. Yeah. Well, and there's always going to be something that pops up, and, and that's the importance of uh, of not only having a, a buyer's rep, but also having a, a maintenance shop that is communicating with both sides and talking Absolutely. to both sides. Everybody's on the same page. Exactly. There's going to be surprises. You can pretty right. much bank on that. Yeah. However, the way you deal with those surprises can make things go smooth. Yes. Yeah, that's right.